Hello viewers, today we're going to be setting up the permanent computer for the shop here or whatever time is left. This is a Lavano or Lavano, whatever it is, Lanovo computer. I don't think they're far into this video at all. Okay, take two. Let's see how far I get this time. I chose this particular computer model because it can mount on the wall. And of course that's not really the intention of this. This is supposed to hang on the back of a computer screen, but you know it doesn't really matter. You can put a screw on the wall and it'll hang just fine. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll set that up and I'm gonna put it over here. I'll mount it right behind there on that wall, and that'll just make a really good clean setup. And then I can get that out of the way because not having that shelf space has really been a problem. You know, because there's a lot of clutter in here, so really can't afford to lose any any of the storage space at all. So this will work out really well. So this has a CD drive on it. Probably will never use the CD drive in this particular application, but as far as I know it, the CD drive is like intrinsically part of the mount, and while I have a ton of software on CD, it's rare I use CDs on a regular basis. So as much as I would prefer a computer to have a CD player, if this CD player goes to waste in here, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I could probably get this off if I tried hard enough, but it's just not worth the time. I think it unscrews somehow, but you know whatever it's not really a problem so we're going to change the hard drive in this thing because these shipped with mechanical drives and most of the drives in these things are spoiled because they've never been turned off this one is from the 2015 so it's not that old but it's uh... it was in service for you know, five or six years so anyways um... I've always had a hard time getting these open. I think it's this part here that comes off. Mm, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely got to be this. It's got to be this part that comes off. Maybe this uh, cover will release, reveal the secret here. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it's part of that cover, okay. All right, so here's what we have on the inside. Oh, there we go, it's an ocean fence. No wonder it doesn't work. Garbage drives. Okay, so let's get that drive out of there. It looks like we have two screws. This should release the caddy, and we have to remove it from there. Now I think it's got a slide to the left. The bottom half is sliding, why isn't the top? There it goes. Okay, so the drive is out. Let's see how many gigabytes are in there. This is four gigabytes. I have tons of these eight gigabyte sticks, so even though four plus four, that would eight, that would be totally adequate for the use case. I'm going to throw 12 in there just because I have it, and it's not doing any good sitting in the closet upstairs. Okay, this drive mounts to the caddy on the bottom. Okay, and that's the orientation. This has some stinking foil or something tape on there. 
I'm not worried about it. Okay, so that's mounted to the caddy. This, uh, there goes the windows. Oh, or the Linux, I'm not sure which one is on there. Anyways, this is going to be, or it is rather, a Toshiba drive. And I totally don't need a solid state drive on this computer, but this is just like the RAM. I have these floating all over the place, so we might as well use them. So let's put this in here. Plug this in. Put these screws back in. For those that are following along, the screw goes there and the screw goes there. Okay. The machine looks pretty clean. I don't see any dust accumulation on the other side of the radiator there. So I think I'm just going to leave it as it is in the spring. I'll clean it out. Uh, but it's... You can see right through the, the radiator. This is how I usually judge it. If you can hold it up to the light and you can see through it, which in this case you can see through it with no problem, then air will get through it and it'll be perfectly fine. So we'll leave that alone. And now let's close it back up. Okay, it's closed. And we have these screws to put back in. Actually, first the cover has to slide on. Okay, now I'll put these screws on. Says. Now let's get this thing set up to the screen here and install some software. Okay, so it looks like it's starting up all by itself, which I don't really want it to do, so I'm going to turn this off and we're going to turn it back on and go into the BIOS to make sure that everything is set up the way that I want it to be set up. I think this is F1 in this case. Okay, we have some general help on the screen. I don't need general help, I've used these computers for plenty of time. Okay, so first thing we want to do is the startup. We're going to go into the boot sequence and we want the hard drive to be first, which is good. Um, the rest of the stuff I don't really care about. This, I suppose, uh, should be second. Okay, I guess I did need that general help because now I don't know how to change this. Well, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's see here. I would like to have it on on uh, Legacy Boot because if it's not, we're going to have a problem. Now, this machine, oh, we may have a number of problems here because this machine, I believe it shifts with Windows 8 if not Windows 10. 
doesn't have a code on it anywhere, but I know it didn't ship with Windows 7. And so we may have a problem with um, with getting Windows 7 to install because of the the Windows 8. Um, that does not have... See, there's the license. I'm not exactly sure how to read that offhand. I, I really think it's going to be Windows 8. Where does it say the memory? System summary. Okay, so 12 megabytes of RAM, which is what I put in. And the hard drive, uh, the Toshiba drive is recognized. And so that's all good. Um, 32 megabytes of video RAM. Since we have enough RAM, let's go up to a gigabyte because there's no reason not to. Um, may have to change that to ID. I'm not sure how this is going to work. It can get really flaky trying to get Windows 7 to run on these newer machines. Don't need power saving mode. Uh, not need to power back on after a failure. Ah, secure boot, that's what I wanted. That means to turn that off, and that should give us the, um, that should have given us the legacy boot option. I'm not sure why I didn't do that. Alright, well, let's see here. Let's see these changes and exit. I'm going to plug in, I have two USBs here, I'm not sure which one is which. I'm going to plug them both in and let's see if if um, it'll tell me which one is which. Dopey Me plugged the mouse and keyboard into the USB 3 ports. That was a total waste of them. I will plug those into the USB 2 ports and put the images into the 3 ports. Okay, so save the changes, exit. And we're going to do an F12 for the boot options. And it looks like it's not recognizing either one. Oh, I knew this was going to be a problem. Doesn't seem to be I may have to redo that Windows 7 installer. There we go. So this one is going to be the Windows one.
Ah, oh, cheese. That's not what I wanted. Wait a minute, that's got an install on there. That didn't even boot to the USB. That's reading off the drive. Oh, for heaven's sakes. I don't want this trash operating system on there. Why didn't it boot to the USBs? Hello, computer. I may have to end up putting Windows 8 on this machine instead. Certainly not going to use stupid Windows 10, that's for sure. It's like ignoring the fact that the USB even exists. Let's try the other one. Because that one I know should boot even if it's a newer machine. Oh! That's what I wanted. Okay, I guess the other disc is just broken. I thought this... Whatever. I thought one of them was Linux and one of them was Windows. Clearly one of his windows and the other one's just broken. Okay, great. So now let's proceed through here. I'm not sure which USB this is, so whatever. Install. Okay, and I'm using Windows 7 Home Premium just because I have a lot of those licenses. And it has, you know, all the features that I need. I don't really need the features of Professional in this particular use case. Okay, so that's going to install now. It should install very quickly because it's flash memory to flash memory over USB 3. And then in the time being, I'm going to go make a new... Linux disk because I want to put that on here as well and that one that I had here that I thought was going to work is clearly not going to work.